Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, I'm going to give you guys my in-depth thoughts on Biomutant, if I think this game is actually worth getting, if it's not worth getting. There's a lot of critiques on this game, and overall it's had a little bit of a negative stigma as well when it comes to the game itself. So I'm going to give you guys my honest goods, my honest bads, if I think it's worth the price point, my honest review numbers, and kind of like all the good and everything throughout the game itself. I have had access for the game for a few days now because I did have early press release for it. I'm also maybe around five hours into the game itself. And I've also been based on this opinion off of what I've kind of seen off of other streamers, other YouTubers, as well as also my overall thoughts on the game itself. And as well, if any of you guys are looking forward to the game, I do want to say there is a lot of positives, but there also is quite a few negatives. And I'm going to try my best to be a little bit more on the in-depth and talk about it because overall this game, I think, has a lot of potential, but it's just not fully there yet. As well, if you guys are brand new and you guys like these types of reviews, you guys want to give your own feedback down below, feel free to leave a comment on that. Make sure you guys are subscribed. We also have a few giveaways going on, like our PS5 giveaway. You guys want to subscribe for that. And of course, we always have a little bit of sell it links linked down below for Amazon links and Twitter links and all that good stuff. You guys want to go and follow those on up. But without further ado, let's go actually dive on in. I'm just going to do a little bit of a live commentary slash review on it as I've written down all my thoughts. So I'm going to start off, first of all, with the price. Now, when it comes to the actual price itself, this game actually is a very expensive game for what is actually being offered. This game is actually made by uh, indie devs, a little bit more of an indie studio. I believe it's only 20 people. So I will give them a little bit more of a pass when it comes to some of the critiquing on the game. But the one thing I can never really kind of stop critiquing on too much is when it comes to uh, actual price point. The major price point for this is not necessarily the best as my character is throwing up in the background. <laughs> I do think the price point's a little bit too much on the higher end. If this game was a $30 game, I could probably recommend this game a lot better. And that's one major critique I could kind of go and say. It's a little bit too expensive for what it is. There's a lot of heart. There's a lot of like motivation thrown into this game. A lot of really good ideas mixed down into it. But the price point is just a little bit too high. As well, when it comes to the actual game itself, the intro took a very long time. And I'm sure any of you guys out there who want to maybe leave a comment down below, you guys can go give me your thoughts or disagreements on it. But one major thing for me is I never really had a chance to go and experience the game until I was around at least two to two and a half to three hours into the game. It was just you walk two feet, dialogue. You walk another two feet, dialogue. You maybe fight like two mobs or whatever, dialogue. And that was actually a really kind of like harping thing that I really didn't necessarily like too much in the game itself. Now I'm a little bit more in the open world area after I've been the first boss and it does open up a little bit more. It's not as dialogue heavy, which is very, very nice. I will kind of give that a little bit more of a thumbs up now that the game is more open, but I talked about this on my stream a lot and everything. The game itself is a little bit bare bones. Like while the game itself looks very nice environmentally, and I'll ma definitely give that a major thumbs up. Like you can definitely tell they put into time into the world building and trying their best to work on the lore and characters. But as you kind of walk around the map, it's very empty. Now, some of you guys may like that. Some of you guys may dislike that. But I'm kind of more so used to a game where there's always going to be random mobs floating around. Maybe you think of Ghost of Tsushima where you had random encounters every now and then. And it still does happen. Like there are things out here like say we're like there's a random cutscene over here with click. Which is going on over here. I'm not sure exactly. I'm just doing live commentary on it. So you sometimes do have little fun things mixed down in throughout the game. But on a very large majority, the world, even though it has assets, you know, like, you know buildings or forts or whatever, is very, very empty. Like, I'm sure if you would even go run towards a certain direction, you'd barely see anything in the first place. And I'm more so kind of used to, you know, seeing mobs, seeing enemies floating around. Now, as I mentioned, though, there's a very, very nice amount of, like, actual assets floating on in. There's, like, little towns floating around over here, too, as well. There's people, even though you can't necessarily interact with the people, they're more so only just vendors. But at least there is, like, some thoughts. There's like, assets built on in, and it does at least look alive. But as I kind of mentioned, more so in the middle, it looks very dead. Like, there's not really much going in here. So you do have a building... And it does look nice that they made the building well, you know, have like textures and graffiti and you have all this art mixed on in. But there's not really much other purpose besides this. There's really nothing else really inside this house in the first place besides maybe a random pot of soup. Which you just can't do anything with it. So it does look nice and makes the world seem alive. But there's a difference between making the world seem alive versus actually making the world be alive. There's always a major big difference, at least in my opinion. But I will keep on standing by that you can tell that they put a lot of effort in terms of like say rocks everywhere there's water everywhere you can see the trees everywhere the environment everywhere you can see that there's actual like bricks and stones and like little fences everywhere so there's definitely a lot of input and uh effects when it comes to this which i think is very nice as well when it comes to the actual game itself one kind of big thing too is the crafting system now i would probably give this game overall like a 6.5 depending on how how the rest of the game goes this is more of like a first impressions like first like few hours impressions uh, so as of right now, I kind of put it like a 6.5, kind of how a lot of these other people have been doing it. 
but as well i do think a lot of the issues i've had such as the intro dialogue and like lack of actual like gameplay like fighting gunplay stuff like that it does kind of seem like there's a lot more popping off now that i'm in the open world area so this actually might turn my review a bit higher after i beat the game fully and see all the options because as I was about to go mention into, the crafting system is very, very intriguing. Mainly because I think that's something this game actually specializes very well. As on the character, you can customize your character at the start. But as well, if you guys go and ever want to go and change up the actual assets on your character, it does also go and change it in the game. So if you go and put on pants, take off pants, you can see the differences. You want to go and change the hat or whatever, you guys can go and change the hat. You guys want to go and change the weapon, stuff like that, you can. And they also have a really nice system like the modifying you guys can actually go and throw things into the actual weapons themselves, do add-ons, do base types, change the handles, or even make a weapon yourself. And I do think that's overall very, very nice and something I think this game does excel at. Same thing too, as well as they also do have preset outfits, which is also very nice. And on top of that, too, you could also go and uh, even mess around with internal progression systems too, as well, such as the aura systems. You could also go and use like uh, different things for the auras, get different types of mutations like psi powers, which I might be kind of slightly covering up over on my webcam, but... Look, for example, for the Sky Spark, you have a chance to actually get really cool different things if you focus more on the Dark Aura or the Light Aura and make your character be more stronger and have different abilities, which is very, very nice to see. Same thing with things like perks, too, as well. You can basically give your character different stuff, like here this. Unarmed attacks inflict 20% more damage to the target, which does let you go and specialize your character a little bit more, which I think is very, very nifty. And I do like the progression system and also the gear system. That is definitely something this game excels a lot on. But the one major issue is that it's sometimes hard to find all the assets you need to improve your gear because you basically have to run around throughout the map and find random little like deposits and then go and well, go from there. Now, well, here's one thing I kind of wish I could see more of is in the game itself, you every now and then do get these little combat things. The major story and slash lore of this game is you basically have to side on either a good or bad village. And as you guys kind of go through that, you basically have to go and try to either unite all the clans or basically take them on down. This is kind of like the whole good versus evil type concept. And there really isn't that much it seems like so far in the difference on the good versus evil for the normal gameplay versus like who you guys are fighting. Like if this would probably be the same exact scenario if I was on the light side, just fighting the other people, which isn't necessarily bad, but it could be a little bit more in depth. I do believe just based off my interpretations of the game itself, that it'll probably affect the ending on the game, but I'm sure the ending won't really change up too, too much on what you pick. There's more so like what happens at the very, very tail end of the game itself. So I would actually personally wish we could have more mobs like this more randomly all throughout the world because fighting like this is really fun. But as you guys can see, it's, this is like the first time we actually found and fought anything throughout the past five minutes or so of me talking. And then now it's already done after two seconds. So that's another major big thing that I had a little bit of issue on is I just wish there was more combat in the game, at least at the current point of this game so far. I do want to go and say though the bosses the bosses are actually quite fun and it's actually kind of cool i do enjoy the idea of all the bosses they do give me a lot of like n64 vibes and like old school type style games which is very very nice and i think i kind of prefer that i think it's actually very very nice to go and see they have like different unique uh, abilities and concepts mixed down in with it such as like you have to like maybe use environmental interactions and kind of help you take on the bosses so it does actually give me a really big n64 vibe which I do kind of at least like for the bosses and fights. But once again, here's another example where you would maybe think like, hey, there's maybe like a random loot, maybe a random box or something over here. But instead, you just have a random drawn out building, which looks nice for the environment. But there really isn't that much else to as well throughout the game to kind of do anything with this. And it might be the same thing for this building, might not. But a lot of the times these buildings do seem very empty and they're just kind of here for like filler in the background. And like, I would love if there was maybe like another chest in here or if there's something cool mixed in throughout the game. And also, too, on top of that, when it comes to the actual game itself, it does run very nice. I will go and say it actually does seem pretty optimized. There is little baby hiccups on animations every now and then, which is definitely not the funnest stuff to have to deal with. But overall, like, it runs mostly good. I have a pretty okay PC, though, but it doesn't seem like it's too, too bad. And once again, you guys can even see from the environments as we were about to walk into like that more icer zone. It is very nice and very well made when it comes to that. But once again, though, I do kind of feel like there needs to be more throughout the world itself, more random boss encounters. And also, I kind of wish there was more side quests and more overall content too in general. Now, there are a few side quests if you kind of float around. You can probably go and find them and they kind of spread out throughout the world. But one of the bigger issues too is the fact that they don't almost kind of really seem that worthwhile to actually go and do in the first place. But as well, they just kind of seem like kind of weird. Like they don't, they're not necessarily fun. They're not like doesn't really add too much to the game itself and story-wise. They are cool, at least for the ones I've seen so far. Maybe as I play throughout the game a little bit more, there's more in-depth ones that were kind of more intrigued on and stuff, but 
as of right now I haven't really felt the need or want to really do too much side stuff because I don't even really care that much about the main story characters so why would I want to go and care more about these random side quest characters you know but maybe they'll get better as the game goes on and has a little bit more of a better more linear point for the game itself so my kind of thoughts in this game like there's a lot more I can probably talk about but I think that's mostly what people kind of care about is like is it fun do you enjoy it is it a cool game I think the game is fun I think it's well made it definitely has its own characteristics and it has its own style mixed on in but I definitely do think that they need to go and fine-tune the very first like progression system of the game for first of all maybe have a few more fights mixed on in and definitely make the world actually have more like actual stories mixed on in and more like stuff in the game besides just random combat that shows up every now and then and then once you do it there's basically nothing else going on because now once again once I just kill these random mobs there's nothing really happening which is fine but with how seldom it actually is to go run to these mobs you'd expect them to actually have some tied into it like a story or some other things with that area a chest there anything at all and I feel like it's kind of a little bit lacking on that side but overall I do want to say the game is not bad I'd probably give it like a like I said like a 6.57 as of now maybe the open world gets better as I progress through the game as my character gets stronger maybe the story picks up a little bit more where it's not just talking at me and maybe the light and darkness vibe actually maybe has more mixed on in with the game but as of right now I still kind of think that the game is just a little empty and needs a little bit more and I like the idea and the potential it has but as of right now I'm just going down here let's go and see where it actually leads like as of right now I'm just trying my best to go and see like what the game's going to turn into in the future and as I mentioned before too as well this is what I want to go and see more of I want to have more random adventures more random things mixed down in and this is kind of exactly what I'd expect more of and this is like my first random little dungeon area I've seen throughout like five hours of gameplay so maybe we'll maybe I'll be long wrong and maybe later on throughout the game we'll have more experiences like this uh but as of so far I'm also even thinking as I'm starting to do this what's really the point of me to do this when I could just maybe be just doing the main story or a side mission instead and go from there so uh I don't know you guys can go and tell me your thoughts if you guys want to agree or disagree I do think the game has a lot of potential I think this game would be a very good game too as well if they maybe just patch up a few of these little things such as add more characters maybe add a few more side quests as like a free DLC maybe expand up the game a little bit more and maybe also go and fine tune up the intro for the game and make it a little bit more uh less boring and kind of have a better flow for the game in general and I can definitely see there being a lot more extra potential for the game itself if they end up doing that but as of right now I will say this game for like a $30 $25 price point I would act, I could actually see myself recommending it but as of right now for $60 it's a little bit harder to recommend and I do think there's a lot of potential there but it's just not fully realized as of yet so if you guys agree or disagree leave your comments down below thank you guys all so much for watching my review once again I'd say probably not worth the buy but there's a lot of good potential and this game is probably worth picking up on sale when it's a little bit cheaper as well or if they go and fine tune up the game a little bit more maybe streamline it and update it just a little bit more too as well but this sometimes uh, requires them to go build the game from a brown up that's probably not going to happen so thank you guys all so much for watching give me your thoughts down below and hope you guys enjoy the game if you guys do pick up the game yourselves